you got in your head? The clippings that I'm gonna show you how to make today. You got it, it ain't a question. Oh, it ain't no one for guessing. No more than emotionally invested. Showing you all my imperfections. I'm only gonna be sitting in front of you for like five seconds. I just didn't want to start the video and not not say hi. You know that would be rude. Um, and I didn't want to hear that. So as you can see by the title of the video, we're gonna be making clippings today. If you're wondering, like, okay, but but what you got in your head? The clippings that I'm gonna show you how to make today. Exactly. I know what I'm doing. I'm a pro at this. Even though it's my first time doing this. That don't matter. <laughs> I did it. That that's what matters. Very, very flawless, very seamless. It gives the girls. Okay. Now, you can do this with any type of hair. As long as those bundles are thick, I feel like you'd be perfectly fine. If they're thin, then I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I have no clue what to tell you. But regardless, whether you get synthetic hair or, <laughs> or you get uh some virgin bundles, you can make the clippings. Like, it's not that deep. And I literally have a video of me installing them and styling them. So if you want to see that, if it's not up already, it will be up soon. So um, literally, I just wanted to come on here and say make sure you subscribe. Make sure you put that notification bell on. Make sure you comment. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that ain't your friend to subscribe. <laughs> Because the girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, they what? Still need to subscribe, okay? So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and get straight into the video. I just wanted you guys to see my face and see how the clippings turned out. So first, I want to go over all of the um, products that I use to make the clippings and the reasons why I use them. Just so you have an idea of all the tools you should have before we jump into making the actual clip-ins. The first thing we're going to cover is the glue. You will need glue to um, make your clip-ins if you're going to follow each step that I did. Um, I used the glue to glue the tracks together um, because I wanted my clip-ins to be thicker. So um, we're not going to sew the tracks together. We're going to glue them together. And I got the quick drying hair glue because don't nobody want to be waiting a thousand years for some tracks to bond together <laughs> so that's why i got this glue the next thing i use are going to be these silver clips um these came in really handy they made the process a lot easier and way more organized um basically i use these clips when i cut the tracks to keep the two that i was going to glue together basically together <laughs> and in place and then also you can use these clips to clip the actual clips that you're going to be sewing onto the track for the clippings. You can clip them on there to keep the placement once you measure out where you want to put them before you sew as well. The next thing that you're going to need is some scissors. Now these are hair shears, so they're specifically for cutting hair, but you don't need that for real for real. These were just the only scissors I had. You can use any scissors as long as they're sharp because we're not actually going to be cutting hair. We are just cutting the actual weft and the thread. So as long as you got sharp scissors, you'll be good. The next thing you're going to need is needles. Now, I already had this pack of needles. You do not need a whole pack of needles to make these clip-ins. Um, what you're going to need to know, though, is look at the size of the holes on the clips that you're going to be sewing on to the track. And that's going to tell you what size sewing needle is going to be best for you so um the regular curved sewing needle was fine for the clips i had but i ended up using the smaller one it's not just a miniature version of the big one it's actually thinner and it was just an easier um, process for me but both of them would have worked fine so it all just depends on the actual holes that you're going to be sewing into on the clips that you have so that's why having multiple needles kind of worked out for me um, so then may maybe you might, you might want to get a pack of needles just so you have options, but it's not necessary. Now this is a must, okay? You definitely want to make sure you have a big spool of thread. 
because you're going to be using a lot of thread through this process. First of all, you're going to be using a lot of thread making one clipping, let alone all of the clippings, okay? So make sure that you get a big spool of thread so you don't have to worry about running out, especially if this is your first time sewing. You're definitely probably going to make some mistakes. You don't want to be concerned about running out of thread. You want to be comfortable in the tools that you have, so make sure you get the big spool and not the little ones. Finally, we have the start of the show, which is going to be the actual clips that you will be sewing on to the tracks you're gluing together, as well as the ones you'll be clipping into your head. <laughs> um, you want to make sure you get small clips because they will lay flatter in your head and make the um, clip-ins to be more seamless. Um, also, I got these off of Amazon. So I got two packs of, I want to say, 50 I did use a lot of the clips, so I would definitely link those below for you guys. Now, the hair you use is really, really important. Um, this is what it came in a cute pink little satin bag, and I ordered it from Riverwood Fashion. They are a wholesaler, but you can, you know, buy individual bundles at a really, really good price. So I'll link all their information down below. But I've used their hair before. Their hair is super thick. It has a lot of luster, as you can see. Um, now, my hair is relaxed. The only reason I got curly bundles is because I wanted more of a voluminous um, clipping, if that makes sense. So anybody that, you know, like wears weave, you know that if you want your hair to like hold curls or to give a little bit more volume, you get either like a body wave or something curly. You don't want to go with something straight. So this is what I got. So the first thing I did when making my clip-ins is see how thick I wanted each clip-in to be. This single weft was too thin for me, so I decided I was going to double my wefts to make a thicker clip-in. So first, you're going to want to measure the single weft in your head to make sure you get the correct measurement. Once you do that, you're going to just fold over where your thumb was and put the track back in your head just to confirm the measurement you had now that you've doubled the weft. Keep in mind the placement of your thumb because that's going to let you know where you're going to cut the track. Now that you have your measurement, you're going to want to cut your track. You're cutting them two places. It's going to be the first place. So go ahead and cut as close to where that track is folded over to that remaining um, hair. And then just put the remaining hair over to the side. Now, before you cut where the track is folded over, this is where your clips are going to come in. So you're going to want to take your clip and clip the middle of the bundle. Once you have the middle of the bundle clipped, what we're going to do is even out this track, okay? Because that's the next place you're going to cut. But before we cut that, we want to make sure the track is as even as it needs to be so that you don't have to keep cutting anything afterwards. So make sure those two ends Basically, the part of the track that you just cut, you're going to have two ends. Make sure those are lined up identical. It shouldn't be given sisters. It should be given twins, okay? <laughs> and then once you have them lined up identical, you're going to want to pull that track as tight as possible. And you're going to want to clip it in the middle. So now you have an even track. This is where you're going to make that second cut that I was referencing. You're just going to go ahead and put your scissors in between that fold and just go ahead and cut. Now, be aware you are going to have some shedding because you just cut the weft. All you got to do is just put your hand through the bundle and remove that excess shedding. So when that happens, don't freak out. It's literally <laughs> normal. Um, then you're going to want to go ahead and make sure there's no hair on the weft because we are about to start gluing our tracks together so when you're applying this glue make sure that you are applying it very evenly like you don't want too much glue but you want enough glue so that the tracks can bond together seamlessly and there's no gaps or like you know any bulkiness or anything like that now you may find that when you're gluing there may be some hair on the weft, even though you just removed hair from the weft. Don't freak out. It's totally fine. Also, don't try to pull the hair from the weft while there's glue on there because it will literally just turn into a huge mess and I do not want that for y'all. So now you're going to take the track that you 
measured out and you know goes with this one that we just cut, you are literally going to place that on top of the glue. Literally take your time and make sure that it's even. You want to press down. You want to make sure that it's stretched enough so that it reaches the end and it looks like how it looked when you cut it while it's glued. You don't want to press down too wild or too rough because the glue is still wet and you don't want the glue to get into the hair. So really take your time while you're doing this. I really feel like the glue part of making the clippings is like the most tedious part because you just really want to make sure it's as neat as possible, okay? Now, after we press that in, you're going to want to press it in again, but now squeezing both sides. You may get glue on your hands. It's perfectly fine. But if you have a habit of rubbing your hands off on you when there's something on them, then I would advise you to wear something that you don't care to mess up. Me, I don't have a habit, so I'm perfectly fine. And hair glue is just like Elmer's glue. So if you get it on your hands and you just rub your hands together, it'll literally just roll off. It won't peel off, but it'll literally just roll off your hands. So you're going to want to go down the entire weft and press both sides to make sure that they're aligned at the top. Because sometimes when you're pressing it down on that one side, it can be a little, a little lopsided. <laughs> so you're going to do that down the entire weft. And then, as you can see me doing, just take the glue off your hands. I did forget to mention that you are going to need a blow dryer. Even though we got fast drying glue... It just makes the process even quicker. For your settings for your blow dryer, you're going to want to make sure the air is on cool and the pressure is on high. Once you have your blow dryer on the correct settings, you're then just going to go ahead and blow dry the weft um, all the way down the weft. You just want to make sure that the glue is dried evenly. You don't want any spaces to be wet and then the other places are dry. And then after that, I just kind of press the blow dryer down on the weft. Don't hold it down for too long, though, because you don't want to burn the hair or burn the web. So probably like down one, two, up, down one, two, up. And then you want to go ahead and flip the um, track that you just made and then do the same thing on the opposite side. Because um, like I said, you want the glue to be dried evenly and just don't leave the blow dryer down for too long because you don't want to burn the hair. And this is what your track should look like after the glue has completely dried. That's why you want to take your time because it's supposed to look very seamless, very neat and clean. I'm literally trying to give you all, all angles <laughs> so y'all can see what it's supposed to look like across the board. But it looks like one track. And that's the goal because you want these to lay very, very flat in your head. So that's why this process you really want to take your time with. Now, if you end up drying the hair and you have these little bubbles at the top after you dried it, it's literally fine. All you have to do is just pick those off because having that extra glue at the top is not going to do anything for you. It's not going to make the tracks last longer and make them stick together more. Just pick them off at the top. Now, you only can pick them off after you dry them. If you notice that there's more glue at the top before you dry it, then literally you just want to take your finger and just wipe it down and then you dry it like that. Now, before we start sewing them on, I kind of just wanted to go over the pieces. I made a couple of different pieces. These are the smaller ones. So to make these, this isn't a measure on your head type thing. You have to literally measure out a clip. So I had to literally... make sure that it could fit one clip. Does that make sense? And this is the way that it would sit on here. So I had to make sure that it had enough room. The only reason that it's not like this isn't the edge of the clip is because if you've sewn hair before, that's how like your track just won't last. <laughs> this is literally how you want to measure it before you cut it because it can only hold one and you don't want a lot of excess track on there. Because you wanted to, you know, do that. And then after that, I just used this and just cut the tracks out with this since I knew this was the size of the clip. Okay, so when it comes to sewing your clip onto the weft, um, as you can see, there's three holes on the actual clip. Now, you might think that you might use the gold one or the second one. 
um, I'm talking about the holes on the clip, you won't. Because as you can see, it literally leaves too much clip exposed. And we're going for a very seamless clipping. So the only two holes that you want to be sewing onto the weft are going to be the top two. That's it. You don't need to sew through the other ones, just the top two. And I mentioned it earlier, but I just want to reiterate, make sure you do not sew your clip on to the very edge of the um, weft because it can become unraveled and now you got to make it all over again. So you just want to scoot it in just a little bit so it could be secure. So now that we know where to place those end clips to make sure that it doesn't come unraveled from the weft, it's really up to you how many clippings, not clippings, but how many clips you want to place onto each track. Now, as you can see, three looks fine, but once I looked at it a little more, I realized that I wanted my clippings to be very, very snug. So I went ahead and did four for this specific clipping. Now, as I said earlier, you're gonna be using um, the same piece of thread for the entire clipping that you're making. So you don't wanna be sewing and cutting, sewing and cutting to each clip. You want it to be very seamless. And the space between the clippings are way smaller for um, the thread that has to be connected to the next one, if that makes sense. And if you do the three, like I showed you before, that's a lot of space for um, some thread to either get caught in a comb while you're styling or anything to happen to mess up the clipping. And we're not trying to make these over. Now, you don't have to put your clips down and space them out before you sew them on to the weft. This is just something that I like to do because I want to make sure I know where I'm placing everything before I start sewing, finish the whole clipping, and nail child, it look a mess. So this is why I do this. Another thing that you could do, um, say that while you're sewing, you may forget a placement and you want to make sure that um, you're able to have the clips where you place them when you're sewing them on. You could use one of the clips that I showed you guys before, the silver ones, and actually clip them onto the uh, top of the uh, weft, as you can see me doing, if you wanna hold your placement, if that helps out too. Okay, so as you can see, I have the thread over top of the clipping I'm about to make. You want to make sure that your thread is a little bit longer than the actual track because you want to make sure you have enough thread to work with so you don't pull too tight and make the clipping bulky. And you do this before you cut the actual thread. Now to the part that y'all really want to see. Let's sew these clippings on. Now, please understand there are a back and a front to the clippings. Do not sew your clip on the wrong side. So make sure the comb side is facing towards you before you start sewing. Now... I've slowed down the um, sewing portion so anybody following along can see exactly what I'm doing. I start sewing from the inside of the clipping. I don't start from the outside and you'll see a, in a little bit why. But you want to make sure that you are threading the needle through both of those wefts that you glued together. The glue is soft so you'll be able to get the needle through. You might just have to push a little harder. But make sure that you do it through the weft, not underneath the weft, not through one weft and underneath the other. You want to make sure you do it through both wefts to make sure it's secure and it'll hold. Then also just make sure that you guys actually don't use thread longer than the actual clipping you're making. Because I used too much thread for this little clipping and I ran into a lot of knotting and having to like undo what I just um, did because I used too much thread. So just make sure you use the right amount of thread. You're going to want to go into each of these holes three times. So we just did one. This is going to be our second time. And each time, please make sure that you um, thread through both of those wefts to make sure that it's secure. So we're going to do this. And each time, make sure you pull tight. So before you thread another um, needle through make sure the one you just did is pulled tight because you don't want anything loose or any additional loops because we're already dragging it with this amount of times that we're sewing we just want to make sure that it's tight and secure so on this third loop that you're going to do it might be a little tricky but i promise you you're going to be able to do it um just find a, the space in the hole <laughs> and go ahead and thread it through and make sure that it's threaded um, between both of those webs. 
you're going to go ahead and um, pull it through like you did the rest of them. But before you um, pull it all the way tight, you're going to want to loop your finger in between the thread, as you can see, and you're going to just twist once. You're going to twist it around once. And what you're going to do, as you can see me doing right now, you're going to take the needle and you're going to put the needle through that loop that you just made. And you're not going to let your finger go. You're going to hold like you see me doing and just pull all the way through until that little loop goes all the way down to the um, top of the weft. What that does is just lock everything that you just did in place. And then we're just going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side. So like I said before, you want to make sure that you thread the needle in between both of those wefts. You want to make sure you do that to make sure that it's secure. And we start all of our sewing on the inside of the clip. The reason you do that is because as you can see on the one that we just, on the side that we just did, it's a little bulky because of basically all the times we just sold that on and the knot we just made. That will not affect your clippings because it's on the inside. So all that's going to do is lay on your hair when you're clipping it in. If you would have had it on the outside, it could have got caught on a comb. It could have became unraveled because it's on the outside of the clip. So that's why you start from the inside of the clip. So you're just going to want to continue and so how you're um doing how you did on the first side of the clip in and i don't know why my camera is so blurry i'm so sorry guys it should clear up in a second though let's see okay there we go so you're just doing the same thing it's three sides on both so you do two regular and then now we're on the third one so we wrap we loop it around once you hold where the twist is on that loop you just made and you put the um, needle through that um, loop and you just hold and pull and you don't let go until that knot reaches the top the reason you don't let go is because it can get it just can get real <laughs> messy if you let go and the loop can get caught somewhere and then it's just not as neat as you want it to be and you see that's how it's supposed to look. You're not supposed to see the clip. Child, don't even look like no clip is back there. Okay? <laughs> don't even look like no clip is back there. That's how your clipping should look. Now, I started on this smaller one just because I wanted y'all to see really how I um sewed it on there. So once you did that second knot, you want to cut the thread. And then before you cut it all the way down, we're going to make a couple more knots at the end. So when you cut that thread originally, don't cut it all the way down at the bottom. Leave space, enough space for you to be able to tie it with your hands. And that's one knot. How many knots did I do? One knot. And then I think I went in and did a second knot. You don't need to do a lot. One, one not one, but two, two to three knots is fine. And um, you pull down and make sure that it's tight. And I think I'm going to do it one more time. Yeah. I'm going to do it one more time. So you could do two or you could do three knots. Just make sure they're super tight. And as you can see, we just pull it down to make sure it's tight. And then that's when you grab your scissors again. And you're going to go ahead um, and you're going to... Y'all can see where the knot is when I put my finger there, right? You don't want to cut right at the end of the knot because that's literally going to make the knot unravel. You want to cut just a little bit above it so that there's enough space so that it does not unravel, but not too close so that it does unravel. And that's literally all you do to make your clipping. You see how seamless that is? You're going to do these exact steps for each and every clipping. No matter the size, you're going to do these exact steps. Now, before we sew onto the longer track, I just wanted to point out another reason why you don't put the clip all the way to the edge of the weft is because since we cut them, some of that hair came out, as I said, and you can see the clip at the end of it. So that's another reason why you want to scoot that clip in a little bit more inward before you sew so that it's not visible on the side or above.
Okay, so now we're going to be making the larger clipping with the four clips, okay? So you're going to follow the same exact instructions I told you before. Make sure that you are sewing through both of those wefts and that you're pulling the thread tight. Now, since this thread is longer, because this is a longer um, clipping we're making, hair might get caught onto the thread when you're pulling. Just pull the hair away. You don't have to cut anything or pull the hair um, like literally off of the weft. You can just like take it out the <laughs> thread. Um, like I said, we are going to be sewing three times on each side. So this is our second time. Now, I had mentioned earlier that I had used too much thread for that smaller clip-in and had experienced some knotting. Even though this thread that I'm currently using is the correct size for this clip-in we're making, using more thread can always result into knotting, and y'all are about to see it. So if you run into that issue, don't freak out. I'm literally about to show y'all how to, how to fix it. So we're going to go in one more time on our third time through the weft, right? And we're going to go ahead and pull the thread. And as you guys know, we're not pulling it all the way to the um, weft because we have to make that loop so that we can secure everything we just did. So as you can see, we're going to go ahead and make that twist, right? Only twist around once. You can, um, this is another way you can do it. Some You don't have to hold the twist. You can also just put your finger in the loop and hold it like that. As y'all could just see, I went to try and pull it and the thread knotted up, right? So if that happens, all you want to do is keep your finger in that loop because you don't want to lose that and just pull the thread um, a loose carefully because all it did was kind of get knotted up when it was being pulled. All you have to do is just pull it loose. You don't have to cut it and start over. Um, this whole process honestly really requires patience. If I'm being honest, if you are patient and take your time, you'll be able to do it in no time. And as you see, we got the knot out, right? There's no need to cut it. <laughs> I just was moving too fast. So just take your time. And since we already had looped the um, thread in, all we have to do now is just pull that thread. So since we're not holding the twist, you literally can just come on down like you just seen me do. And then the thread will just slip off your finger and you just pull tight. That's what you do. And we pull it again tight to make sure that it's on there snug. And then we're just going to go in on the opposite side and do the same exact thing. Okay. Make sure you are starting each um, sew on the inside of the clip, okay? Don't sew it on the outside of the clip at all. Every time you put that needle through the clip, it should be on the inside of the clip, okay? So we just go ahead and work that needle through the weft. As you can see, it did take a little bit more um, from me to pull the needle through. Um, I realize that's what happens when the um, glue has like had time to dry. Not, I'm not telling you to start sewing clips on and the, the glue is still wet. I'm just saying you might come in contact with a little bit of resistance. Um, it's fine. Like you can still sew everything through. You want to make sure when you are going from that first hole to the next one that it's pulled tight but not so tight that the um track is basically folding or is kind of like buckling you just want to make sure the track is flesh to the actual clip so you don't want to pull too tight but then you don't want to pull tight enough if that makes sense um and you'll be able to fill all of this. Like if you're doing it while um, you're watching this video, then you'll have a better understanding of what I'm talking about um, so that you don't pull it too tight. And as you can see, it tried to knot up again. You just want to take your time because it's hair. It's a lot of thread that's getting caught up in it. That's causing it to knot. So don't freak out. Just take your time and watch what you're doing. 
And if the thread starts trying to knot up on you, it's probably just some hair caught up in there. You just need to, you know, detangle it a little bit before you pull it a little closer. Okay. And then we're going to go in. I think this is the third time that you go in with the um, needle on this one. Now, I'm not going to narrate for the rest of this whole track just because it's the same thing over and over again i just want you guys to see how you connect the two clips because the first one we went it was just a one clip um clipping and this is going to be a four clip clipping so i want you to see how you connect the two um but like i said before it's literally all the same um movement for each time you're sewing them on and i'm so sorry that it's getting a little blurry honestly but um yeah, so you're just going to go ahead and pull that thread through, all the way through. And you see me stopping and straightening out the thread because I don't want it to actually turn into a knot. So when you see it start curling up, just stop pulling and straighten it out. That can be a little tedious. If you want, you could just like put your finger through the thread that you're pulling Um and then pull like that so you don't have to keep straightening it out. But um, as you can see, we go ahead and we do our twist, right? And um, what's happening here? <laughs> see, the thread like kind of starts curling up on you. So like I said, you might just want to put your finger through it from jump so that you don't run into the issue I'm running um, into. And yeah, it seems like I got the memo and I just put my finger through the thread. So I was just trying to pull it closer so that the loop wasn't so big. So like I said, you go through that um, loop with the thread and you pull it through and um, you just keep pulling until that knot goes all the way to the top. And it's secured like we did on the other clip that we made. So this is the next part. So here, like I said, since this is a multiple clip, we are not cutting this like we did the other one. We only cut that one because it was only one clip going on there. Now you'll just grab your next clip and place it. Make sure it's placed where you want it to be, right? Because we... We did the pre-placement before, but now we're putting it on there. So you just still want to adjust it to make sure it's the right amount of spacing because we have, what, two more that has to go on here. So then what you'll do is you'll, like I said, you start from the inside of that clip and you literally um, are going to do the same exact motions that you did um, for this first clip and for that other clip that we made. The only difference here, though, is that now we're connecting them. So we're going to pull tight. And I think something got caught. Yeah. We're going to pull tight, right? And my thread is twisting up. If that does that to you, just take your time because it's more likely to get caught. But you don't have to cut anything. So if you pull too tight, it'll do this. You do not want this. But you want to pull it that tight and then straighten it out so that it looks like what you're seeing right now. So this is the perfect amount that you should have between the two clips when you are adding another clip onto the clip in, right? You want to pull it straight enough that it's going to lay flat, but not too straight that it'll be too much thread in between those two clips and what could potentially get like caught in a comb or something, right? So now that we have connected them, you literally are going to go in and do the same exact thing you've been doing. So that would be your first one. This one will be your second one. And then after that, you do your third one, you do your knot, and you do the same thing on the opposite side. And then you connect another clip in the same, the same way that we just did this one. So each time you add a new clip in to your, um, weft i keep saying clipping but y'all get what i'm saying <laughs> each time you add a new clip to your weft you're gonna want to pull it too tight and then straighten it just enough just to make sure that it's on there snug but you want to make sure you're not you're not keeping it 
the way that it looks when it's pulled too tight because it won't lay right in your head. So you're only pulling it too tight when you add that new clip to make sure that when you straighten it out, it's the right amount of thread in between those two clips. Now, as I stated earlier, whether you're making a single clip clip in or a multi clip clip in, the steps are the exact same. Now, these are just the steps that I followed. If you have any better steps or a way to improve the process, by all means, do what works for you. But I just wanted to show you guys how I created my clip-ins. I've been wearing mine for about like two months now, and I haven't had to touch up anything. I've been washing them, curling them, doing anything you could think of, and they're perfectly fine. So we're just going to go ahead and continue the video, and I'll come back once we are done.
And this is what your clipping should look like. Real seamless, real cute, you feel me? Real professional just bought these out the pack, but no, we made them. <laughs> they literally came out perfect. I hope yours came out perfect too. I am gonna have some videos coming up on me installing them. I think I'm also gonna do like a little series on different hairstyles to do with your clipping so stay tuned for all of that but i really hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope it helped hope you were able to make some clippings of your own ah they just look so good <laughs> bye y'all